What's happening y'all and welcome to another episode of Camp Cooking. Tonight I'm up in northern Arizona and I'm making chicken wings. But I'm gonna be doing it a little bit different. And to be honest with you, it's because I'm lazy. I don't really feel like setting up the tripod, but I do feel like making a little bit of content for you guys. So yeah, I'm gonna be just doing the whole handheld thing. Hope you guys enjoy. And like I said, we're gonna be making buffalo chicken wings. And well, I don't have a grill or an oven, so it should be pretty interesting. It's gonna be all skillet top. Luckily, I'm not extremely far from town, so if I f it up, then I'll be able to go in and get some actual chicken wings. Let's get started. What I do have is a fire pit and some pretty good wood, as well as this grill grate, which ironically enough, I found here like two and a half, almost three years ago at this very same campsite. That's crazy. But there's also a fire ban. It's it's hot, it's dry, and yeah, no fires. So like I said, on the skillet. And this is the first time I've ever done it this way, so yeah, bear with me. And I know I don't have to ask you guys, but hey, if you see some stuff and you wanna leave some tips or tricks, feel free to do so in the comments down below. So Buffalo Wings got started in Buffalo, New York when somebody, I think they owned a bar, were cooking some snacks for some college kids and they mixed some Frank's Red Hot Sauce with some butter. That's the story I got anyway. So I'm gonna be doing something similar to that. However, I'm not gonna be using Frank's Red Hot. I'm gonna be using this Louisiana hot sauce, which is very similar to a Texas Pete. The only difference is, is it's got very simple ingredients that you can't read because they're worn off. I'm gonna mix this with butter. Dude, I swear to God, the birds are drones, man. Did you hear that noise it just made? It sounded like a computer. So yeah, Louisiana hot sauce with some butter. That's gonna be my buffalo wing sauce. Now, if I was cooking these at a house or with a traditional grill, then what I would do is I would char grill them with, of course, seasoning. And then after they were almost done, I would put them into a cast iron pan with a little bit of garlic and butter. And then I would toss them into the wing sauce. However, like I said, today I'm not grilling them, so I'm going to do things a little bit different. I'm going to cook them straight onto the cast iron from start to finish, so fingers crossed. Hopefully I don't mess them up. I ain't going to lie to you, the main reason I'm cooking these is because look at how much I got them for. Shout out to the Reduce section in Fry's Marketplace. You'll forever be my favorite grocery store. All right, so I'm starting off here with eight whole wings. Before I get started, let's go ahead and get one thing clear. Just because you don't see me wash my hands don't mean that I don't or won't. But if it makes you feel better to go start bitching in the comments, then go ahead and do so. The good news is, is you ain't eating nothing I'm cooking right now. I'm just simply showing you how I do it. First thing I'm going to want to do is go ahead and cut these up into, I guess, party wings is what they'd call them. Basically, I'm going to break them apart. Primarily because this little tail guy right here, you don't need. Now, I'd show you the trick to making these party wings but i'll be honest with you i don't really know it myself i just uh managed to make my way through you know what i mean anyway i got them all cut up into individual wings and now i'm thirsty cheers I go ahead and dry them off you ain't got to use shop towels but that's what i'm using you do want to make sure that they are dry, though, because the drier they are, the crispier they're going to get, no matter what you're cooking them on. For seasoning, I'm using some Triple Lock by Overland Spices, some paprika, great value kind, a little bit of that garlic, some of that onion, some crushed red pepper, and a little bit of salt. Three little twists ought to do her. And that's going to get this old yard bird tasting right. Go ahead and get that cast iron up to a medium high. Okay, that's a little ambitious. Maybe medium low, low medium, whatever you want to call that. Not too damn hot. Also got a little ambitious with the seasoning. That's a lot of damn seasoning, man. If it tastes good, I use it again. You know what I mean? All right, I don't know if you can see it, but my pan is hot. Maybe even too hot. It's starting to smoke. I've turned the heat down just a tad. Next, I'm going to add a spoonful of this lard. Yeah, that's right. I said lard. I'm from the South, man. Also, regardless of what you might think, hydrogenated oils are terrible for you. And animal fat is not that bad. Do some research if you don't believe me. Now, my pan's got a little gangsta lean on it due to the angle of the dangle that I'm sitting at here. But the good news is, is I got this trusty little stick that I made to even things out. All right, there we go. All right, now that my pot's hot, I got oil in there. I'm going to go ahead and start placing these bad boys in there. Put them down as much skin as you can at first. What I mean by that is inevitably you're going to have spots that have more skin than not and put the more skin than not side down, if that makes any sense. By doing that, you'll help render some more fat out of those chicken wings and create a little bit more oil, which means extra juicy. Now it's time to let them do their thing. Sit back, drink some beer and enjoy the view. And the view is good.
I know it's a little harder to appreciate it because of all the tree cover, but there's beautiful mountains surrounding us at this little site right here. And it's hot this time of year in Arizona, even in Northern Arizona. But at this spot right here, I'm close to 6,000 feet. So it's a little bit cooler. Another cool thing about this spot is it's kind of semi close to the city by about like 30 minutes or so. So if I need something from the city, I can just run down into the city. But yet it's still secluded enough that I don't have to worry about anybody being around. And you know, we're out in the wilderness, which also means that you have to deal with wildlife to include bears yikes i actually woke up from a nap one time at this very campsite and saw a herd of elk walking right through that little pathway right there and as far as the bear goes well there's a story with that too let me check on the chicken then i'll let you guys hear the story oh chicken's looking good now there's two different approaches here you can flip them early and often like i'm gonna be doing or you can just set them and forget them and flip them, you know, once. But I like to flip them early and often. So last summer, a story emerged of this very area here in Arizona where a guy was attacked and killed by a bear. Which was kind of crazy because I've been camping up here for years and I've never seen a bear. But apparently it was living around here and uh, it killed that dude. Earlier this year, I came up to my local little bar and, uh, and I was talking to a guy. We got to talking about where I was camping at. And he said, well, you heard about the bear attack. I said, yeah, I did hear about it. He said, I live up in that area. He said, that was my bear. Excuse me, sir? He said that him and all the neighbors around here had been feeding that bear. For years, they had been feeding that bear. And the guy that got attacked and killed by the bear, well, he didn't feed the bear. He was brand new to the area. He was building a house. He was living in a travel trailer. And the bear kept coming around, and the guy never fed him. And one day, well, the bear got tired of him not feeding him and attacked and killed him. Now they shot and killed the bear and you would think, okay, well, the good thing is, is you ain't got to worry about the bear attacking you anymore. To which the local replied, that ain't the case. You see, what had happened was that bear had been keeping all the other bears away. And now that that bear is no longer here to, you know, control his territory, well, there's like three or four other grown male bears that are kind of fighting for this territory here. Which can be a real problem, as you might would imagine. And that's why you see shit like that. Hopefully they ain't hanging around here tonight because I really don't feel like fucking with no bear. This is one of the reasons I'm cooking dinner so early. It's like four or five o'clock and it won't get dark until somewhere around seven or eight. I just feel like I got a better chance in the daylight to, you know, fight off a bear if I need to. Speaking of which, I need to, uh, grab my protection from bears and when you're in the wilderness i advise you to have some sort of protection whether or not it's bear spray or gun or whatever the case is find you a way to fight off bears or whatever kind of wildlife you might encounter and please whatever you do keep your damn trash out of its way just make sure you take care of your trash and don't leave it at camp time to flip except for this time i gave him a toss more so than a flip drank now these are starting to get to a point where I can start working on the sauce. I got my little nesting pot over here on low heat. And to that, I'm gonna add some of this Louisiana hot sauce, some butter, and I really don't know how much, so we're gonna start with half a stick. A little bit more of that seasoning mix that I made. Just a pinch though. Okay, two pinches. We're gonna do some garlic. And by some, I mean, you know, some. Yeah, we're just gonna finish that off, shit. Do it till you feel right, you know what I mean? All right, we're gonna go ahead and add this other stick of butter because that's just hot. All right, now I'm fixing to do something that might make some of y'all mad. You can skip this step if you want to, but I like to pour a little beer on my chickens, you know what I mean? It helps steam them up. It really does help cook them. I don't know if it adds to the flavor or not, but hey man, beer chicken's always good, you know? I tell you what, my damn nostrils are burning inhaling this uh, buffalo sauce. Now I've never made buffalo sauce like this. Um, this is the first time, so we're uh, experimenting together. And I think that I might actually add that uh, other half a stick of butter because I think it might need it. Now, if I was cooking these on a grill or at a house, then uh, like I told you guys, I would put the garlic and the butter into the cast iron before using like a buffalo sauce. But making my own buffalo sauce is brand new. So I don't think it's gonna be too much butter. I mean, let's face it, you really can't have too much butter, you know? You know what I'm gonna do because there ain't no way it could be bad? I'm gonna add a little bit of honey. And by a little bit, I mean some honey, you know what I mean? Now, I'll be eyeballing a lot, but the one thing I ain't gonna eyeball these chickens let's make sure they're right 
They right dog. One more pinch of the seasoning here over the chickens. Oh yeah. Now what I'm gonna do in order to sauce these bad boys is I'm just gonna put the sauce from here over into the cast iron. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I'm not a fan of dripping wet saucy wings. I kind of like them to be baked in the sauce or cooked in the sauce, if you will, you know? Now that the sauce is ready, the wings are ready, I think it's time. One more stir for some good measures. And there we go. Now we're just gonna toss those wings about. All right, so now I've poured the excess out and I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit. Oh yeah, baby. And keep stirring them, you don't want them to burn. And the beauty about cast iron is you get it nice and hot like this, put a little water in, scrape it down and wipe it out, and it's good as new. Look at that yard pimp, Brody. Damn. Now when it comes to hot and spicy buffalo wings, I'm a blue cheese fan, and only the best. Leave a comment down below, what are you eating with these chicken wings, ranch or blue cheese? Yes, uh, let's eat. I'm gonna go for this little dude right here first, just in case it's horrible. Slim chance, but it could happen. A little dip dip potato chip. Man, that ain't bad. I could have actually used probably a little bit more hot sauce, to be honest, a little less butter, a little bit more hot sauce, and it would have been all right. Not bad, man. Got great flavor. Definitely buffalo, but not too strong. That's pretty good. Let's try another one. It's not bad at all. Let me try a bite without the blue cheese. I'll be honest, I probably won't buy buffalo sauce anymore. You know, I'm on this kick to where I'm trying to eat clean and that doesn't necessarily mean picking the healthiest thing out there. Obviously chicken wings ain't the healthiest, neither is Coors Banquet. But I've been trying to pay attention to what's in my food and only eat, eating simple ingredients, you know what I mean? And dude, Clean hot sauce, actual butter, that's good. Hell, for that matter, you'd be hard pressed to catch me ordering wings out again. I mean, one of the only reasons that I've been still ordering wings out is because, you know, in the truck, I always felt like I just couldn't cook them really good. But I'm not a fan of fried wings. I much prefer baked wings, and these aren't baked wings, but they're real close, and they're not fried, and they're not breaded, which I hate breaded wings. These are really good, man. I must say, I've impressed myself. So RIP to the, uh, you know, wing places out there because I probably ain't gonna be coming through, especially now that you guys are charging like $18 for six wings, which come on, that's ridiculous. So let's recap here. For $6, I got eight whole wings. I split them up into party wings. That means that I got 16 wings. I mixed some Louisiana hot sauce, which is a simple hot sauce with some butter. A lot of butter. I could have stuck with just half the stick of butter like I originally planned to. Some seasonings that, well, if you're cooking, you've already got those seasonings anyway. And I cooked it all in a cast iron pan and cleaned up and I got it all done within the hour. Now I'm eating some bomb ass, relatively good for you, healthy wings with some good blue cheese dressing, sipping on some beer and looking at absolutely beautiful scenery. It don't really get any better than that, folks. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a comment down below. Tell me if I should keep making the Camp Cooking TV series. Make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button to see more like it. And until next time, you guys keep hanging in there like a hair on a biscuit. And remember, you can be happy if you've a mind to. Peace, y'all.